Hey guys, they're going to be doing a bit of an update to the Blinking Jewel Thief series of videos. So, a few years ago, actually about five and a half years ago now, I built a Blinking Jewel Thief. Now, this was basically just a little circuit that was soldered onto a AA VAT battery. I'll go ahead and put a card in the corner if you want to watch that original video. Not the greatest quality of videos, but you know, we're still improving, still learning over time. I'll probably say the same thing about this video in another five years. But anyway, I assembled that blinking jewel thief circuit and it's been blinking away for the past five and a half years. No issues, uh, still has quite a bit of capacity left in it. And honestly, I'm kind of tired of waiting for it to die. So what I'm going to do today is build up a blinking jewel thief circuit that runs on smaller batteries. Smaller batteries won't last as long, so hopefully we'll get results just a little bit faster with this circuit. Now, I apologize in advance because this video is probably going to be slightly weird feeling because I've actually recorded this part of the video three times due to uh, audio problems. So we're doing this for the third time and hopefully I can make it work this time. But anyhow, uh, this little circuit board is what I've came up with for our blinking jewel thief. Now, I figured I would do something a little bit better than just slapping wires together onto these little tiny button cell batteries. So, circuit boards are cheap. I figured it'd be a fun little exercise to go ahead and try to build one. And this is what I've came up with. Now, the parts that you'll need to build one of these are, well, this circuit board, which I'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, a little toroid. And I have actually sourced a toroid on DigiKey now, so we can go ahead and go to the link in the description and purchase these toroids if you wish. Uh, and I figured I would do that because it would make it a lot easier to replicate than what I've done in the past where I've just found random little toroids uh, laying around in my old parts drawer. But other than that, we've got uh, a transistor, LED, a capacitor, a resistor, and a capacitor kind of bodged onto the back of the board, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, I designed this board to try to be as versatile as possible. So there's spots for SMD components. Uh, for most things, there's an SMD like transistor spot and diode spot, for example. It also has a place for a current shunt resistor, as well as a little jumper that I can cut to allow current to flow through that pad. And I intend to use that in a future video to probe this guy with an oscilloscope so we can kind of see what's going on with it. Now, in the past, people have commented on my videos suggesting to hook one of these guys up to an LR44 cell, which is essentially what we're doing with this circuit board, except there are multiple options for batteries. One of the options is to use these tiny little cells. These are V377 cells. I think they have another name as well, which I'll have to throw on the screen, but uh, they are only 27 milliamp hours. And I've put two of them on here so that they're in parallel because I kind of figured the 27 milliamp hours wouldn't last very long. But uh, with two of these in parallel, this uh, the previous one that I built, this guy lasted for about eight weeks on two of those batteries, which is honestly pretty impressive. An LR44 cell, which there are pads for on the back of here, should last for quite a bit longer than that because I believe those are about 150 milliamp hours uh, versus the little tiny guys here. Even two of them in parallel is still only, what, 54 milliamp hours. But one problem with this circuit board is that I no longer have the files to it. Uh, I believe that I managed to delete them when I reset Windows at one point, and I thought I had a backup of them, but apparently I do not because I cannot find them anywhere. So the original schematic for this and the original board layout unfortunately does not exist anymore, which brings us to this schematic because it's the dramatic reenactment that I have now. It's effectively the same as the previous Blinky Jewel Thief circuit that I've shown on this channel got one NPN transistor, you have a 100 microfarad capacitor and a 100 kilo ohm resistor connected uh, to the base of this transistor and up into one of the coils of this little transformer. Um, I do apologize that I have this resistor mislabeled as 100 microfarads. Obviously that is not right. That is supposed to be 100 kilo ohms. Um, anyway, the other side of this transformer is going through the transistor, and then of course, 
transistor just goes back to the ground of the battery. The only difference between this circuit and the previous circuits that I've shown is this extra capacitor here, C1. When I built these across double A's, I did not need to connect an extra capacitor across the battery cell. Now, the reason why it's necessary now is because these tiny little button cell batteries have a really high internal resistance. And with them having a really high internal resistance, that means that they can't provide the pulse of current that this thing needs in order to operate. Now, you might be thinking this thing is supposed to be a really low current device. That's why it lasts so long. Well, yes, on average, the amount of current this is drawing from the batteries is incredibly low. The amount of current that it takes to actually blink that LED every once in a while is about 20 or 30 milliamps. And 20 or 30 milliamps to these tiny little button cells it might as well just be dead shorting them. So you need a bit of an extra energy reserve in order to give the circuit something to pull off of. And that way the circuit can drain the capacitor down and then the batteries can recharge the capacitor for every cycle is effectively how this ends up working. It just makes the peak current draw off the batteries a little bit lower. And that's why this big 470 microfarad capacitor is just kind of bodged on the back of the uh, power and ground of that button cell. Uh, otherwise, it's labeled as 100 microfarads on here because anything over about 100 microfarads is going to work just fine for that capacitor. Anyway, I'll go ahead and roll the footage of me building this guy. Okay, so step one of this process is to build the transformer, or technically I believe it would fall under the category of inductor. But we're going to take our toroid and we're going to take the magnet wire. Now, you've probably already noticed this magnet wire is actually two strands of magnet wire twisted together. And the way that I do that is just to take a section of magnet wire, fold the end over, uh, put one end in a drill, cordless drill, and then put the other end or hold the other end of the pair of pliers and just twist it together so we get this nice tight uh, spiral. That's just going to make it easier to work with. Not technically necessary to do that, but it just makes it a little bit easier to wind the transformer. Other things of note on the magnet wire, this magnet wire is 26 gauge. So if you're going to go out and actually buy magnet wire for this project, I would recommend buying something smaller than 26 gauge. I might go down to 30 gauge or so. And the reason why I'd recommend doing that is because I've done a little bit of experimentation with this circuit and it seems to like having more turns wrapped around this inductor. And this inductor is quite small, so there's a kind of a limited number of turns you can get with wire as thick as this. So if you can make the wire a little bit thinner, you can get more turns on this and in theory it should work a little bit better. And when I say work a little bit better, I mean it shouldn't rely on the extra capacitance that we have to add across the battery as much because the extra turns of wire will limit the peak current that the circuit will pull. But anyway, wrapping this is pretty simple. We have our twisted wire. We're going to just stick it in the toroid somewhere and we're gonna start looping it through. So we got it in the toroid there. And we're just going to leave a little bit hanging out of the end, of course, so we can make connections to it. And then you just repeat this a whole bunch of times. And eventually you'll either run out of wire or you'll end up with a transformer that you can't fit any more wire in. start getting a lot of wire on it you'll probably end up wanting to try to compress all of it together try to fit as many on that first layer as you can it's all just kind of trying to find a place for the wire to go and I will go ahead and continue wrapping wire around this in another layer just to try to get as much wire on this as I can so the second layer doesn't usually end up getting very far because you uh, can't really fit too much extra wire in this guy. 
All right, so unfortunately at this point I lost my audio, but uh, and I also ran out of uh, ran out of memory on my SD card, so a lot of problems here. But anyway, what I've done is I've just effectively stripped off the wires on the ends of the transformer there. So uh, four wires, I've just used solder to take the uh, enamel coating off of them. You can also do it with sandpaper. But the next step is to figure out which wire is what. So I've brought out a multimeter here. We're gonna use continuity mode in order to determine which wire is which. Now the way that we're gonna hook this up involves having the transformer wound in opposite directions, which effectively means that we need to connect one of our wires on one side of the transformer to the other wire on the other side of the transformer. You're gonna see how I do this here in a second. So I went ahead and I just untwisted all of the wire all the way back to the transformer because I don't need all of that wire to be twisted together and that would just get kind of confusing because I'm gonna have to untwist it here in a second anyway. All right, so with the meter in continuity mode, we would hear a beep if I had audio from this, but uh, unfortunately that didn't work out. So we're doing this in a voiceover, but we're going to probe one wire on one side of the transformer and then we're going to probe wire on the opposite side of the transformer you see that wire and that wire are connected together. So that's one piece of wire. Then the other wire should not be connected unless something is shorted somewhere for some reason. And as you can see there, the meter didn't do anything. So that is not connected. So what we want to do is connect the two wires that are not connected already. So the two different pieces of wire, one from each side of the transformer, and we're gonna go ahead and just twist those two wires together. So this is a standard jewel thief winding process, but just to say it again, effectively what we're doing is taking the start of one wire and connecting it to the end of the other wire. So that's why we're connecting from both sides of the transformer. And moving on, we're just going to go ahead and tin all of our wires up and start assembling the board. All right, so now that you've seen me build it, I will talk a little bit more about the important things on this and where the components all go. The most important thing on this particular board, which doesn't matter anymore because I've deleted this board, but the uh, twisted windings, the ones where both windings are connected together, that goes to the far rightmost pin or the one that's closest to the battery connectors. And then the other two single wires, it doesn't really matter where those go. Uh, the 100 kilo ohm resistor is in that position there. I believe that's uh, what R, I think it might be R2, or maybe that one's R1. But uh, anyway, that resistor, but anyway, the 100 kilo ohm resistor goes there. 100 microfarad capacitor is going up here, and then obviously a transistor in the LED. 
Real simple, not really that many places where you can put these components. And then the big capacitor bodged on the back. As for this one, I've gone ahead and thrown a pink LED on it just because I thought that would be kind of fun. Uh, and it'd be a change of pace. And I, I've had these LEDs for probably a couple of years now and I haven't used them for anything. So I figured I probably ought to throw one in something. So anyway, that's about all there is to building one of these guys. And if there's enough interest, I will remake the circuit board for this thing and post that somewhere where you can download the file so you can buy your own and uh, build one of these guys up if you wish. Uh, and then maybe if I do that, I'll do a little video of sort of basics of setting up, a, a laying out a board and setting up a schematic for it. Anyway, in a future video, we're going to take this guy, hook up some oscilloscope probes to it and see what's going on in this circuit. So if you don't want to miss that, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down below. I apologize for the uh, issues that this video has had with audio and the fact that it's probably kind of all over the place. But anyway, if you liked it, regardless of that, go ahead and click on that like button. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or if you'd like to see me uh, set up a schematic for this board and lay a board out, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.